Hey guys, so here is Lady Tremaine out of, out of her box. So let's get started on the face right here. So for me, this face mold is the one that really, really saved this entire doll. Uh, they decided to go with a new face sculpt from the last Lady Tremaine doll. And I believe this expression is one of the um, one of the most faithful um, recreation that the Disney Store ever created for a limited edition doll. It is so like the movie, even down to her smirk, which you can actually see when um, she broke the uh, Cinderella slipper by tripping the footman. That's the exact uh, scene, I believe, in which they take this smirk from. Um, it's very, very... Um, devious and very much characterize who Lady Tremaine is and I think it's just it's just wonderful as for her hair it's actually the same old hair of course that Lady Tremaine usually has which is this which is this sort of like updo kind of like hair buns for older ladies and and of course she has the uh, the regular uh, darker gray uh, streaks of hair and also the uh, the lighter streaks but the one touch that I really like is that little swirl that she has towards the front of her hair. I think that adds a lot into the look of this doll. And it's very, very um, appropriate for an older, older lady to have that kind of hairstyle as well. So as we move to her color, um, from what I can see from this design, I kind of get a, um, like a feel of a uh, sort of like a horse jockey type of thing. You know, sort of like um, how British ladies, when they um, go into a horse competition, they kind of wore this sort of like overall leather type of outfit. And they usually have a like a long whip stick in which they carry with them to kind of whip the horses. And that's what they, the, um, the mask kind of reminds me of. So the overall look is very, for me, it's very British and sort of very, very um, like posh type of um, dress which kind of fits in the overall theme of this collection which is you know she's going to a party and of course she want to dress her best and as elegant as possible and I believe that but also kind of edgy with the whole leather and stuff so I believe they kind of capture it pretty well even though some people argue that the Queen of Hearts would kind of fit better in this outfit and I believe the one drawback to her is the all these kind of roses patterns in which they include in her dress, which I don't think goes with her at all because she has nothing to do at all with roses in the entire film. So I believe they should have kind of just draw even more like key patterns, just like any kind of different patterns, but they should have just stuck with the key motif. And I think that that would have been better maybe. But as we move on to her color, it is made of leather, and um, it's it's thinner leather than the what the limited edition dolls in the past usually has, but it still get the uh, got the effect done, and she also has that um, little brooch around her neck, which is similar to the um, the uh, gemstone that she wore in the film. She has a bit of a uh, a net stocking around her. Um, chest area on top of underneath the bodice and also she has these two puffer sleeves which also reminds you of the original sleeves that Lady Tremaine wore in the film and of course she has uh, a continuing sleeve which is part leather and part um, net stockings uh, overall, um, the bodice part is very, very good to me. You know, they kind of give you this illusion of this pin-up, updo, uh, little, um, what do you call those? Um, you know, they kind of pin, pin it up, you know. It, it's not really pinned up. Of course, it's probably sewn in together, but it has the um, appearance of buttons, sorry, buttons, as if she's buttoned up. And of course, her mask, which is actually a more traditional masquerade mask than most of the other characters do in this collection. Uh, in my opinion, it's all right because, as you know, Lady Tremaine, there's not much that you can do with her. And I believe going on with going off with this mask is the right way to do it. And I believe the feathers 
not only it's appropriate for a masquerade mask, it's also reminiscent of her uh, step of her daughter's feather plumes, which they wore when they um, are going to the ball, if you remember from the film. So that kind of ties into her, um, to the entire step family, really. So of course you have the uh, the famous key motif, which is used a lot in this doll, in the mask holding holder as well, and you have these two like sort of creepy, voodoo like, uh, gemstones, to kind of uh, emulate the the skull motif, and it's sort of long and it's just sort of like she holds it in her other hand. As we move down, we see the key which is shaped like Lucifer. Um, I didn't notice this until I actually opened the box and it's really, really... Now this is what I expected for more of the entire doll, really, this kind of Lucifer uh, idea. But, you know, unfortunately, they kind of just reduce him to the key, which is pretty good, but I kind of expected more of Lucifer for the, uh, the entire Lady Tremaine doll. So um, it's very cute and I'm glad they didn't go with a, another skeleton key motif really doubt that, that I think that would have been boring so yeah I think they did a good job on that so she has this upper um, upper sort of like flaps of her dress which is of course reminiscent from the film itself which is made, made of velvet and it has some this kind of like cross stitching around it and of course the famous famous cage dress which is kind of more infamous really for this doll uh, not a lot of people like it it kind of make her look like like a stripper, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, at the same time, they are villains, so I think an edgier look kind of always work for them. You know, with the princesses, I don't think you can get away with something like this. It's too risque, but since they are villains, I suppose, they kind of, yeah, they kind of, they can pull it off sometimes. But on the inside, you have this kind of like uh, shorter, uh, shorter skirt with uh, more neck stockings and a high lace boots. Now the chains, um, the chains, I, I believe uh, it's meant to symbolize Lady Tremaine's um, oppression and also sort of like a cage that she built around Cinderella. I believe that's what it's meant to, um, to represent. That's what a lot of people um, gotten away with when they first look at the concept. But um, yeah, for me uh, personally, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an original idea and I do believe while it's uh, maybe controversial when you first look at it, once you get used to it really, um, I think this idea might get stuck with you because, you know, if you always give a doll just a traditional uh, round dress, that will be kind of boring eventually. So you need this kind of like, just, you know, uh, pop to, just to kind of have the doll stand out from the rest of the collection. So on the bottom here, we have this sort of like a satin underlining, which at first when I saw the pictures, I was hoping that this part would be made of fur. But of course, after um, closer inspection, it's made of satin as all the other, which is kind of disappointing for me because, you know, usually with kind of like um, a bottom Underlining part of a dress usually they kind of turn it into fur sort of like what the uh, evil queen has So, uh, yeah, it's kind of disappointing that they just kind of with this went with the same material as the rest of the dress But of course, uh, there's more um, Patterns on the back of the dress right here. There's uh, different types of flowers Which you couldn't really see because I'm not gonna unbox her of course uh, you have more keys, which is actually um, sort of like, um, not embroidered, but sort of like screen printed into it. But the rest of these images, they sort of just kind of like, not screen printed, but more like, um, I don't really know what's the pr phrase for this type of um, uh, fabric images, but they sort of just like uh, really, really stuck in into a part of the dress, so they wouldn't like... Um, they, they couldn't really flake over time, so it's good. So it's as if they're all a part of the dress. So pretty much there it is. Uh, it's, a, it's an overall good design. It's not too uh, popping compared to the rest of the villains of this collection. But, you know, I think it'll, 
it'll please people once they see it in person, really. Once you get it in your hand, I think you'll be um, quite surprised at how original she looks compared to the rest of the concept of villains in this collection. So thanks for watching this review. I know it's a bit long, but I hope you enjoyed this doll um, and hope you, I hope you're able to get her. She's not as popular as some of the other characters, so I suppose she's a lot easier to get. And I think you won't be disappointed once you um, have her in hand. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and leave more of your collection stories down in the comments below. Have a good day. Bye.